There will come a day when zombies rule the earth. The question is, will you be ready? The answer is yes, because you're listening to The Myth Wits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekiverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Hello. Is this thing on? This thing is on. All Our right. guest this week is Joey Arborer. Hey, Joey. Hey, hey, how's it going? It's good, it's good. Joey is a founder and now sole owner of Zombie Tools. Currently uh, 43 years old, he has been making blades for around 13 years, 10 of which as Zombie Tools. Zombie Tools employs eight of the best, craziest hooligans you'll ever meet. Joey, welcome to the Mythwits. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Good, Good to be here. here. Yeah, man, we. I am very happy to have you on here. I've been. I've been looking at your blades for the last year or two, and uh, one of these days I'm. I'm gonna break off enough money to buy one of them because they're really cool. I got my eye on one of them. It's like a Which butcher one? sword. The. It's. I forget the name yeah, of it. Well, but it's. Um, ah, crap! It's the bush sword. It's like. Uh, kind of like a big machete. Um, like the Reaver Cleaver. I think it's the Reaver Cleaver. How did how did Zombie Tools come about? How did how did this entity that is Zombie Tools come to be? Oh, it that is probably a longer story than we have, but I'll try to shorten it as best as I can. Uh, in that, uh, back in the day, I met a guy named in a bar named Max. Uh, so, uh, so we started sword fighting. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did Shanai eastern style and i did uh rapier western style and we kind of brought those together and for seven years we ran a club called the drunken jedi pirate circus why do you guys have to be so far away from us (laughs) (laughs) and uh at our height we probably had uh 18 people showing up just because we supplied equipment and and then we just got to beat on people It it was lovely but over time uh, especially with rapiers, uh, things started ban break, and it turns out swords are expensive. So we said, why can't we make this? Mm-hmm. And uh, we, got, we got some blanks, and we made some practice blades, and that initially started the process where we got the equipment to start making blades, and we just kept going. And we were many different names starting off uh i think our first business name was uh bloody dick armory <laughs> uh, one because it sounds awful right yeah, yeah. but we're montana we're a montana business and i used to go fishing all the time as a kid at bloody dick creek so <laughs> it kind of tied together something that sounds awful with something that's very montana right uh and then we became fanatic swords fanatic forge and then uh, it was the big horror show. Uh, Max got hired to do a horror show, which he was really good at at the time. Uh, and we had four months to build in an old restaurant. Uh, and we decided to make a Wild West zombie brothel. Oh, nice. nice. And for four months, we had zombies on the brain. We had women walking around in lingerie and zombie makeup and in cages and it was crazy and one night we were drinking at my place and see you know we've been having such a problem trying to figure out where to go with this blade making business because you're either historical or you're tactical or you're fantasy and we didn't really know where to go with that uh, because we didn't really want to be stuck in any one of those genres and i said well why don't we make blades for the zombie apocalypse that way we can do whatever we want it covers all bases yeah and and that just opened up our creativity to what we could do and didn't make us have to even when we uh try to replicate something that's somewhat historical we can put our own spin on it without people being up in arms right and I, you know what, I love that because, and that's it's some so some of the stuff that I do other than this show, uh, I do some uh, game design and, and writing and stuff. And uh, every time I try and think about doing any of that stuff, um, 
with uh, you know another property. Uh, you know, and I've I've done exercise where I'm like, well, if I were to ever write for this genre, like say Star Wars or whatever, um, you know, I would always feel so like hampered, like I can't tell the stories I want to tell because I, you know, I always have to fit it in the genre and the feel and, and you know and all that. Um, and it's just nice to be able to just break out, like like just create something new. Uh, so it's so it's really it's really awesome to see you know these blades that you've come up with because they're kind of you know kind of like you know, realistic blade, not realistic, real, like authentic blades, you know, from, from history, but they're not at the same time. They're, they're also modern. So, you know, they have the same, a lot of your blades have the same, you know, they're very similar, but not really. And that's cool. That's, that's actually really cool. Hey Pete, why don't you tell Joey, like Thanks. as close as we ever got when we wanted to go out and beat each other up with stuff. <laughs> and play, okay. play. Yeah, what do we right. do? Yeah, we, so we, we were <laughs> in, 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 we, we didn't build knives and sharp things because well <laughs> we're, we're dumb and clumsy so what did we do no also so back in the day so this is back in uh, late 80s we um we were they were seeing these these larpers sca people you know padding weapons and, and fighting right, uh, right and then we we decided to get into some of that and um so we would take and, and we were not professional at all which is like i'll just wrap a stick in some foam and go at it right so, i use so, my hockey equipment <laughs> right so mike uses nice. hockey. and we we were not authentic at all there was no like Dude. we didn't build armor or anything it was just like whatever you want to put on whatever you want to use is cool uh you say that's a sword sure it's a sword looks yeah. like a sword why not you Look, know? looks like a hockey stick mike but okay right <laughs> but we put padding on it of course you know because we actually hit each other and we hit each other full on it was no yeah. we didn't fuck around it was you know you'd get pounded with stuff uh this one of the one of our group uh Padded up an axe handle, you know, and, and the axe handle fucking, you Ouch. know, yeah, right. It works. It, oh, it works. It works. <laughs> it works. Uh, another guy had a, um, he had a, a Bakken and, uh, and that was all cool, right? That actually worked out really well, except for when he stabbed and it actually has a point on it, which would come through the padding and stick you anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> oh no. Oh, Steve Wallet. He, uh, he put a tennis ball in a tube sock and taped it to a stick Right, yeah. and we're not thinking anything about it. It's just a tennis ball, right? Well, f momentum's a motherfucker. He was swinging that thing around and hit me in the face and knocked me clean off my feet, busted up both my blocked. lips, and <laughs> fucked me up. Especially when it got wet. So he's swinging around and he's in the grass, and the damn thing oh, gets wet. Pow! I was like hit with a rock. <laughs> it sucked. Ugh. But it was fun. We it was fun. We had a good time. That sounds like an adventure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We only had let's see. Um, <laughs> Minimal person, blood. There was blood. There was Minimal. oh god, yeah. There was lots of blood. Uh, I think Steve got his cracked his shin. I got knocked out once. Um, I just put it on the tally on the wall. I was like, up oh, another one. Um, yep. And uh, Steve's wife Sue, Broken she got bones. knocked out. <laughs> What's that? Oh, just once. Sword Broken fighter. bones. No, uh, Steve had a crack shin. So, I mean, not like broken, broken, right. but it was a yeah. crack shin. Huh. Um, yeah, so it was pretty brutal. We had a good time with it, though. It was fun at the same time. I mean, you know. We broke ribs on a fairly regular basis, but we fought rather viciously. Right. So, so when people say, you know, it's like, uh, I played sports, you know, sports will make it sound like we played sports. Yeah. We did. It just wasn't <laughs> sanctioned. It wasn't a team. Probably well, was not even remotely safe. But yeah. All right. So, uh, Pete, have you gone and like, have you picked out the not not your favorite? We already just talked about our favorite blade, right? I think we both agreed. Like the Reaver Cleaver, uh, it, we like is in design. We I think we both uh, took to. But did you looking through these names? What was one of your some of your favorite um, names of the weapons? Because um, there's one there. I have two of my favorites. Uh, and as you're, if you're not ready, I'll I'll go with mine. Um, one is the uh, the Apaka Katana, I think, is just the best name. And it also is a very impressive weapon, I must say. Uh, well, the Deuce, too, it, it, in and itself is a very impressive weapon. And if anyone wants to know more about the Deuce, you got to go and check out some of the videos online because the, <laughs> the Deuce is just an amazing, uh, very durable, very <laughs> durable weapon, I must say. <laughs> I watched a couple of videos of Oh yeah, I, dude! I highly recommend the death of the deuce. That I was just such a good yeah. video. Um, and and oh, no, the oh, uh, 
The hey, Sharkalope. We I think it we was were, my other favorite name, the Sharkalope. <laughs> we were saying the Reaver Cleaver. Hold on, that may not be my favorite one. Hold on. I like the Reaver Cleaver. Oh, God, the thing is sweet. Um, no, but my favorite one is the Deuce 2. I like the Deuce 2. Okay. That is a beautiful blade. That is, that is a sweet... That is, it's, it's a sword, you know, so it's, it's like a regular sword, except like a beast of a regular sword. It's like, take a regular sword and then turn it into a were sword, you know, like a werewolf sword. And that's, I mean, it's badass. Although the Reaver Cleaver though, Jesus Christ, you could do some damage with that thing. Holy and the, the balance on the deuce too is right where you want it so right. that you can spin it and it still has that forward momentum, but it's not weighing you down too much. Right. Yeah, I like that was that was my favorite because it's it reminds me it reminds me of like you know like a like a bush sword, uh, kind of somewhat somewhat of a machete, somewhat scimitar, some you know it, it's a lot of things, and it, and you can go fully two handed with it, so you can do some real fucking damage with that thing. Here, I'll oh, I'll yes. screen share. Hey, wait a minute, is that the, oh, all right? I'll put that up. Sure. So is is the Reaver two? Is that the one? I remember there was I watched a couple of these videos before, or was it the Deuce two? Was the Deuce two the one that you cut through the the hood of the car with? Uh, that was the original deuce. The original that deuce, was the original yeah. deuce. Similar length, okay. slightly different blade profile. Okay, yeah, because I remember you were like hacking through a through a, the hood of a car. It was like holy shit! You cut door, and cut, I think you cut a couple doors in half, which is no my. Uh, yeah. Um, and then they might go over to the Z Zaka Sushi. That is this one, right? Yeah. All right, can you see it from my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Yep, that's so, true. okay. So it yep. looks like a, uh, it's like it's like a, a samurai sword with some real nuts on it. I love. It's yeah, awesome. yeah. <laughs> it's well, I got all right, Joey. I got a question. It just occurred to me because, uh, and I don't know if anyone else or if you watch this show, um, Into the Badlands. Uh, I was wondering, uh, and none of yours have it, which would be cool to design one with it. But there was a uh, one of their one of the blades that they showed in that show had what looked was it like first season, um, second season. And it, it uh, showed a, two episodes okay. into that one. It it showed a guy with a uh, th you might have seen the sword in the first season. I'm not sure. It may have been one of the final battles when he took it. I'm not sure, but it was that sword that had like little keychains that looked like rings on the top end of it. You know, obviously not the the blade end, but on the top end. And I was wondering, what was that for? Because the only thing I could think of was. The one time I saw it when he when he had it behind him, did he is it just that he that's how he used it to um to mount it behind him or like you know to holster or is it does it have some sort of a weight or some sort of a a meaning you know do you if know anything you about look that? on the river cleaver and rat bastard it also has a hole up front it doesn't have them all the way down uh, okay. sometimes they did that so but I like that Mike. Mount rings into things like that uh, so that when you're in the midst of a fight it kind of rattles and jingles and it creates a distraction but okay. it also when those rings flip forward in a forward strike it adds a little bit more uh, forward momentum okay oh, okay also, it has it does actually have a purpose. Yeah. I thought they were just ornamental. There's rings on the end of swords, so they're they're actually there is a there's a real purpose to those. Turns out. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. So, what are your what are your new releases? What um, I I saw you got a couple of them. What is what is new to uh, this uh, year? Crazy year for new releases. Um, just what a week ago, uh, we released the spit. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the spit is a beautiful, awesome blade. I really enjoy swinging that thing around. Uh, it's based off of uh, the African Zulu uh, Ikwa. Okay. The spear sword. Yeah, the the, uh, right. the handle is as long or long, slightly longer than the blade. Yeah, right, it's, it's they're very close. Like yeah. a short, it's kind of like a short spear. It's it's sort of sword, sort of spear, sort of multi-purpose. It's a, it's a spear sword. Okay, cool, fantastic. Yeah, I, I think um, uh, Apaka okay. Katana, right? Is that how you say it? Apaka Katana? Apaka Katana. Yeah. You have I to mean, be confused with it, it, Hakuna it all, all Matata. It's such a beautiful Apaka Katana. It's so beautiful looking. That's a nice sword. So is that similar to a Naganata? So a longer, or not Naganata, um, not Naganata. Um, what the katana. Hell is that it's, but it, it looks like it's the longer, the, the really long Katana. I'm trying to think if there was a... There was a name for that, but is it the same length oh, as a katana? It's, uh, Nadashi. 
Yeah, that's it. It's the gotcha. really, really long katana. It is not that long. It, uh, okay. The Afa katana is as long as a traditional katana. Oh, okay. And uh, Zakasushi is about as long as a traditional uh, wakazashi, maybe a little bit longer. We like to go a little bit big. Okay, fantastic. All right, all right. So what is uh, what was something like the T-Rex uh, claw? What did that set me back? <laughs> the T-Rex claw. Uh, that's just there for size comparison, just so everybody knows exactly how big these blades are. I know. Right, because we're... Because <laughs> we all know how big a T Rex is. You didn't is, catch right? my humor there, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I've, that... I've heard so much of that. <laughs> and our uh, usual uh, answer is something along the lines of it: the T Rex is drinking all of our beers, so we had to get rid of him. Okay. Uh, ate the last employee, had to get rid of him. <laughs> God damn it! I'm. This, you know how thick? And sometimes I can be pretty thick. I'm so thick. You have. You actually have a scale on the side here that has numbers on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so smart. <laughs> so observant, Mike. Huh. <laughs> I, I just thought that was like. Gee, I wonder know. how long this thing is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking scale on the side. That was just how long I had to look at the page. I got 49 oh. more. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I didn't even see it. Totally didn't Until my browser right. closes. <laughs> All right. So, um, so what else? Do you, any, any other new blades? Um, oh, we got the uh, let's the, see, this El is Chapo? January in February. We are retiring the Xiphos, it's a short sword of Greek design. Okay, and oh, once yeah. that comes out, we're bringing the uh, Legionnaire out, which is a uh, Roman Gladius inspired. Okay, so it's gonna oh. be more of a, of a of a kind of a kite point. Uh, yeah, it's meant for thrusting, but it's got enough beef that you it can it can slash. Okay. Oh, and by the way, if you all if you want to, anyone wants to check out these, just go to zombietools.net, and uh, you will not be disappointed. And I, I especially encourage everyone to check out the Trauma Hawk because tra- again, that's another awesome name. <laughs> I mean, the names of these are amazing. Even the little knife, the mauler. That does. That looks like that looks. See, that looks like a raptor claw. Yeah, like you could yeah. you could really just open something. But up there with are that. so many knives out there named the raptor. Right. No, I know. No, no, I know. I know. There are I got it. so many knives, and I mean, you look at it, you go, "Wow, this is the raptor." But that would put us in the same field as so many of the other knives. Oh, fair and enough. it took us a long time to actually come up with a final name. It was a, an employee, Josh that was walking through and he had five of them kind of curled up in his hands like this. And said, it's, it's, it's like a, a grizzly bear paw right here. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We have to call it the mauler. Mm-hmm. That works. Works. Excellent. So what is it? So you got a couple things, you had a couple things in your, uh, in your notes. Um, uh, and I'm assuming there are events or, or, or I don't know what they're, what, what's a, what's pirate pool. Uh, pirate pool is a game that we play when it's, well, not icy outside. Uh, we play games with our swords because cutting can. is fun. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, pirate pool, we've got, oh, probably about a six foot by two, three foot table. And we put nine cans on the table. And the rules change nearly every time we play. But the basis is that you have to cut two cans uh, every turn. And if you cut those two cans cleanly without anything tipping over, then you get to go again. Mm-hmm. And you just keep racking up points. Usually we play to 21. Uh, but if you're knocking cans over or if you don't cut a can all the way through, then it's the, the next person's turn. And it's a lot of fun. Unless you get somebody that is just going, well, I'm going to use the sword. And then they just run the table and. That wasn't fun for anybody, <laughs> except for maybe you. <laughs> so, so what what are your rules on on drinking while playing this? Do, do you do you say you know once you get to a certain drink, you're not allowed to play anymore because you're handling sharp objects? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we generally go off the, the the stumble method. If you start stumbling around, we're going to take the sword from you. Okay, huh. that's a good rule. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Wow. All right. Yeah. I mean, in the in the Boy Scouts, we teach the blood circle. You know what I mean? But we. <laughs> It pretty much just extends to where your reach is, not to the reach of where your alcohol can take you. <laughs> I have to introduce that one to the boys. Right. You know, so when 
We should have had some of these rules when when, uh, when I was a young man. We we went to West Virginia and we had we'd taken a bunch of guns with us. My aunt had a farm up in West Virginia, up, up on the top of a mountain, and we went up and and uh, we're shooting guns all weekend. And you know, so we're sitting around the fireplace and we we had a big piece of meat cooking on the fire, and we're all sitting there after shooting all day and getting pretty tanked. And uh, of course, we're sitting there with our guns, right? Because why wouldn't you? And um, I heard this noise. I can think of a hundred reasons, but go ahead. (laughs) I can think of like a thousand. So I'm sitting there. (laughs) Go on. Sitting there around the fire, and I hear something rustling around, and I'm like, I got it! And I took. (laughs) I had this sawed off shotgun. So I had a 12 gauge, it's about this long, right? And I. Oh, jeez. I lean over, right, and I pow, shoot this thing, right? And of course, I don't have a good grip on it, so it jumps out of my hand, and it, it cut. It cut my hand open. The, the the hammer came back and cut my hand open right here. And did you know that that's hollow in there? Like you can like blow in it and it'll inflate. Because I found that out. It, I did there was not a, know that. There was a hole. See, there, a, a hole, hole in your hand. <laughs> You're right. I had to put a piece of tape over it. <laughs> Maybe you could have had a new uh, a new instrument there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, yeah. So, so that uh, after that, we uh, we put the guns away. That huh. was, yeah, yeah. It's a good thought. It's a good yeah, thought. It's a good, good thought, right? All right. So, what's what do you do on summer solstice? Do you have uh, do you have like a big party? Uh, we celebrate both solstices. Uh, in the summer solstice, we have our open house party, and <laughs> yeah, we invite all the public uh, people come from all over the country. Really, it's kind of crazy. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, we put swords in their hands. We rope off a whole area. They can cut cans. Uh, yeah. And we drink a lot, eat a lot. Uh, sometimes there's live music. Sometimes we just have music playing in the background. Uh, it's a really good party. I encourage anybody that's a Zombie Tools fan to just try to make plans to come out. It's oh, usually sweet. the Saturday, Friday, Saturday, uh, after the actual summer solstice. Oh, cool. That sounds really cool. Uh, so do you have you know some came up I was, I was thinking about this earlier and I, and I want to come back to it when when you come up with a design so you got all the, you come out with new designs and stuff have you ever come out with a design tried to try to make a weapon that that didn't work out you know like like you, you had an idea and you went ahead and tried to make it and it just wasn't like didn't fit whatever whatever your desire was like and you're just like ah this is not working I don't like this design oh yeah yeah quite often uh, I was making a CX the way back. Uh, that just did not work out. The more I, I tried, the more I changed, and eventually I just threw up my hands. Maybe so maybe I'll try again next year. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of designs that uh, I like, but absolutely hate making. Uh, okay. People ask us to make kopesh, uh, kopesh, and that's a really cool. I've got a, I've got what three kopesh sitting right over there. A, Big two-handed kopesh and then two one-handed kopesh. Uh, they're beautiful blades. Pain in the ass to make. Is that the, is that Pain the curvy in blade? The ass. Uh, no, that's a uh, what flambage or Chris that's, blade. Okay, okay. Uh, it's uh, the Egyptian uh, curved oh, kopesh. blade. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. I would imagine that'd be hard as hell to make. Um, so, so what metal do you use? What do you what do you make your swords out of? Uh, most of our blades are made out of 5160 spring steel. Uh, it's a good steel for swords. It's it, it, it can bend, which is the most important thing because you need to be able to bend a sword. Otherwise, it's just going to snap. So right. all of your swords basically can do the same thing that you did with the, uh, with the deuce where you can bend it 90 degrees? They are heat treated the same. Wow. I don't recommend that, though, because yeah, yeah. the, the, those were all destructive tests. We were trying right. to destroy that blade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but try as you might. Like it took a jersey wall. Yeah. Two days of trying and then said, All right, we're tired of trying. We're going to the Jersey barrier. Oh, nice. So did oh. have you seen and have they have you ever have you seen stuff in movies where people have done stuff with swords and you're just like, does it does it ruin you sometimes when you're watching a movie and you're just like, Oh, that's bullshit. The sword wouldn't do that or or that sword would have broke or that sword wouldn't have broke. Um yeah. <laughs> I mean, you see the katanas that go through anything. Katanas are just regular swords. They'll go through the same stuff. I mean, some are built really well. You see uh, uh, blades going edge to edge and not having any damage whatsoever. Uh, 
that wouldn't happen. Right. Uh, that those are two very fine points coming together. Something's going to give. Uh, yeah, there are so many things in movies. I mean, how hard is it to impale? Me. Especially person. movies that our blades are in. Oh. Uh, have you? Oh, your blades have been in movies. <laughs> yeah, we've been in uh, Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. Okay. I don't know if you've seen it. I, I didn't I particularly like that movie, but there's a scene at the end. I, I, I don't know if you guys know this about uh, when you're making movie blades. You make one really nice, pretty one out of steel. Mm -hmm. And then you make another nearly as pretty one out of uh, uh, aircraft aluminum. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've heard of that. So that the actors can swing around all day and be in gnarly battles. Right. But I'm pretty sure that we just gave this production one steel one and one aluminum one. But he made the final battle between the good guy and the bad guy using both of those so one guy was using a steel one against an aluminum one <laughs> <laughs> okay i really feel for both of those guys one the guy that had to take the hits from the steel one and the one mm -hmm. that and the steel guy that just had to lift that heavy thing all day through so many takes mm. all right but there was a cut right at the end as uh he had the blade to the girl's throat as they're going through a portal and they didn't cut and put in the good steel sword. They had the aluminum one <laughs> that had been chopped on for probably days of cuts and cuts and battle scenes. And you could just see the edge was just all chewed up Why he had the blade pointed out rather than towards the throat. I don't know either. <laughs> but it was one of those things in the movies that I just, oh, that's my blade. And they're doing such a bad job portraying right that blade <laughs> right you and 10 other people in the world noticed but yeah right. it still kills <laughs> yeah <laughs> right but it's it's right. like you are one that of those true. 10 <laughs> right and, and you know the other go, 10 were in the theater with me let me let me go back My to the crew. katana let me get back to the katana real quick cuz i was watching someone did a takedown on on the the mythology of the katana you know there's this big mythology that the katana is this like super weapon you know whenever movies or or any kind of media tries to portray the katana of course it's the greatest sword ever and you know it's it's indestructible and it can cut like you said can cut through anything um and and the thing that i was reading said that it's really not that much stronger than any other sword it just has it has some slightly different properties, um, but they, they said that people generally tend to think it's such a great sword because of all the energy that goes into making it. Like all the effort and the work and the craftsmanship that goes into making one of them uh, seems to impart some kind of uh, fake like or, or it, it, it's not it's not a real um, I don't know. It's, it, it's trying to make it out to be better than it is only because they put so much effort into it, which doesn't make it any better of a blade. Uh, you know, for, for combat or anything like that. It just means that they did more work making it. That is generally my opinion. Uh, the beauty of the katana, in my mind, is that the Japanese had such shite steel to start with. I mean, they did not win on, on the ore of the world. And they had such shite steel. But through craftsmanship they actually came up with a serviceable blade okay. and and the craftsmanship that went into it is just amazing and beautiful and the years that took to get there is absolutely amazing and that is in my opinion the max uh the magic of the katana blade now you give those same masters modern steel to start with then you might get something that's actually magical. I don't know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because there's modern steels out there that are just ridiculous. Yeah, it's oh, a lot yeah. easier to roll steel these days, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually I was I was reading that that if they they said that um in this article I was reading they're saying like that if you cast just cast steel and sharpen it that it's actually a serviceable, usable blade. It may not be as good as a forged blade, uh, but if you were trying to, uh, if you were trying to arm, you know, a, a bunch of men, and you want to do it quickly and efficiently, that they would be usable blades. They would work. They would they would kill people, and they wouldn't like break right away or anything like that. That's true. Yeah, they would. It's they true. would be you good. know usable blades. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> so if the zombie apocalypse happens, you can you can 
you know, pour. If you don't have, you know, Joey's excellent superior blades, you could make a mold and pour your own, and they would kill zombies. I'm going to head for the hills of Montana myself. So. Right. Okay, fantastic. All right, Joey, well, thank you for joining, but stick around for a game. We're going to, I'll tell you what, we're going to, uh, we're going to play a game. I, 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 Joey said he's a big fan of Star Wars. Uh, so I, so I put together a Star Wars game. Um, if there's anything else, hey, Joey, did I, did I cut you off too soon? Is there anything else you want to tell people that we, that we didn't cover before we go? You into know, I think we're good. I've had a great okay. time. Go oh, to zombietools.net. Yeah, zombietools.net. Absolutely. Check it out. Yeah. I mean, dude, even if you just want to go check it out and see some cool stuff, it is really, really cool. Uh, and these make check good out Christmas some of their presents. videos on uh, Facebook, too, because they're yeah. awesome watching drunk guys cut shit. So. <laughs> right, right. And if you <laughs> if if you got a big geek in your right. in your love in your life, I'm going to escape about 30 seconds. I'll be right okay. back. Go That's for fine. It. Go for it. If, if you got a big geek in your family that that, that you love and you want to make them like super happy on like a birthday, like a big geek that likes swords and and weapons and stuff like this you know and you wanted to buy him something really really cool like you could even go in with some other people or something you know the um you yeah, couldn't the, go the, wrong the uh Deuce the reaver too. cleaver for instance is uh not bad i mean 374 dollars i mean that is right. it's a handmade sword i mean right. that's not this, bad right this is not something that you know, that would just sit in a closet. This motherfucker, it's going on the wall. It's a centerpiece. Right. You know, and, it's and it art. Is, it is not only serviceable, but you can cut hoods in half, right. okay? Like, the amount, of, the amount of shit, you got to watch this video. It was so awesome to watch them cut all the crap that they cut open. Right. Yeah, if you want to, like... <laughs> For example, no, no, we're just, I'm just, I'm just pimping the blades because I love them, you yeah, know. We're just, you yeah, we're just pimping. Because we I was looking, I was like, oh god, I forgot to check how much one of these things is. Three hundred and seventy-four dollars for like the Reaver Cleaver. That is not that bad. No, it's totally reasonable. If you've looked at prices for swords yeah. online anywhere, or gone to a show where you've seen where they like where they have swords and stuff, fuck it, it, dude. It's a good deal. It's a really good deal. How much was your William Wallace? Our ha- prices have gotten a little bit higher over the years, yeah. mm-hmm. but it's always been our goal to try to get keep the prices reasonable. We want to play the middle ground. Yeah. You got right. the super, super duper cheap swords that actually don't work, and then you've got the super duper expensive swords that very few can afford. Right. We want to play that middle ground. Yeah. Right. How much was that uh, William Wallace behind you? All right, so the Wallace that's behind me, I'm not really sure. That was a gift. I th- I want to say, and I've had the fucking thing forever. I've had it since uh, 99, maybe, 2000. Um, I want to say it was probably about 150 bucks back then. Yeah, I it, it was is, 175, I think I remembered. Or maybe something like that. It yeah. it is. It could be sharpened. It is a combat-ready blade. Oh, it is? Uh, oh, I pro- thought that was replica. Okay, new, so that is steel. Well, yeah, it is, well, it is a replica. Well, I, it is a replica, but it's also real steel. So it's, okay. it's also right. it's a real sword. It's not sharp. I, I've never had it sharpened because I keep it as a wall order. I'm not going to run around with it and you know cut anything up with it. And besides, it's it's if you ever I'm, cut anything up with it, I check to make sure that your threads are good. Anything okay. that's threaded on is subject to question. Right, right. I I probably would not. I, it's I like it as a showpiece. I, mean, I like it just as a as a as it for me it's it's art. So it, it's part of my art. I hang on my wall. But, but all zombie tools weapons oh, are combat ready, correct? Combat ready to go. Oh yeah, we, we don't mess around. Yeah, it, good. Stuff. Will it arrive sharpened? Like, will I be able to cut yes. a head right off? Oh, nice. Oh, I'm in. I'm all in. right. <laughs> well, go to zombietools.net and uh, buy some buy some swords, buy some blades. Um, all right, so let's let's go to. All right, now hold on. This transition thing. Hold on, I got all this stuff set up here. We've got game show stuff coming. We've got game show. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's just go to that. It's game time with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Peter Bryant, and on this episode, we're playing Star Wars Race or Indian Taste. I have chosen a number of Star Wars races and Indian dishes. I will read the name to you, and you must tell me which it is. A Star Wars race or an Indian taste? Feel free to think out loud. If you get it right, you get a point. High score wins, and we encourage folks watching live to play along. Oh, you're so happy you're on that end of it now, aren't you? Oh, my God, yes. So happy. Joe, what you all know is, in prior seasons, I ran the games. 
and I used to come up with all of them, and I did all the research, and it was so fun to just sit there and just say it out there, and you start, everyone's like, oh, I don't know, oh, Christ, I don't know, so, so, yeah, I'm being punished right along with you, bud, here we go. <laughs> here we go, all right, all right, so, so don't, right. we can do this. Don't, don't feel bad if 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 you don't, don't feel bad if you don't get any right. It's a guessing game. I mean, I tried to keep some of the ones. I I, I really did. I tried to keep some of the Star Wars races that uh, you've seen in the movies and stuff. So I mean, because there's hundreds of them, like through all the comic books and everything like that. But I also had to keep them kind of sounding like Indian names, Indian food names as well. So I know we'll see. We'll it's see. a fine line. It's a fine. It's a very fine line. All right, it's a fine see. dine. Let me. Uh, no, no one fine dine. There you go. Dying. Thank you, Joey. I got it. I got it, Mike. All right, so I got to do that. Then I got to do this. Oh, now. Give me one second. Sorry, my computer's jumping all over the place. And then... All right, so Mike, you're going to go yes. first. Being that being that you're the host and, and, and Joey's new to this, you've played this before. Let's so let's do not this. Not my first right. time at the rodeo. Your first time actually playing the game and not running it. So, Mike. Yes. Is is this a Star Wars race or Indian taste? Yes. Nikto. Nick. What is that now? Nikto. N i k t o. Nikto. Nikto. Uh, I'm going with. Uh, I'm going with an Indian taste. Indian on taste. All right. Let's do this. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> Nikto, they were all reptilian humanoids that were noted for their leathery skin with an average adult standing 1.8 meters tall. Sometimes these were covered in spikes and horns. Yeah, but what you didn't know is that uh, Indian people actually cooked them Eat and those? made them yeah, okay. into well. a tasty... A very nice curry. Yeah, so yes, I win. Good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Joey, yours is Sulustan. Sulustan. Or Sulustan. Sorry. Sulustan. That's a Star Wars race. Star Wars race. That oh, is right. correct. The Sulistans played an important role in the Galactic Civil War and were charter members of the That's New Nino. Republic. Notable for their members of the species include Nine Nub and Ten Nub. Wow. Yeah, you like that? How many nubs does it take to screw on a light bulb? <laughs> At least nine. All right, so Mike, <laughs> your word is... I, I'm not sure if this is Veda or Vada. It's V-A-D-A. -A. Kind of like Vader, but... Veda. Indian food. Indian food. Do this. Okay. That is correct, Mike. All right. Veda is a South Indian snack <clears throat> staple made of made of a lentil or flour batter fried into a donut shape. Who the hell eats staples? Anyway, all right. That's fine. Do you like staples? I like staples. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck all in right. Teeth. Uh, I mean, I eat nails for breakfast, but not staples. Ugh. All right, Joey. Tryani. Tryani. That's T R I A N I I. I don't know of any Star Wars race that's called that. But I also don't know of any Indian, Indian food. So I'm going to go with Star Wars race. I would have done the same. I would have done the same. Good answer. Good choice. The Triani were an advanced, adventurous felinoid species that inhabited the outermost oh. portion of the Tingel Arm, bordering the corporate sector. Their homeworld was Trian. Oh, I thought you hit the correct button, didn't you? I did. He said race. Oh, oh you said race? Oh, good on you. <laughs> I was going to say food. <sighs> Jesus, Mike, try and keep up. We're doing a show here. Hey, I'm on my third glass of uh, uh, whatever this is. All right, all right, Mike. Belgian beer, yeah. Kulfi. K-U-L-F-I. Kulfi. Oh, Kulfi is Indian food. Oh, you knew this one, didn't you? Yeah. 
Come on, you know me, man. I know Kofi. Indian stuff. Oh, that does not look like food, though. It <laughs> is. Kofi, an iced like... preparation made from thickened milk, mm. <laughs> almonds, and pistachios. <laughs> if it's cold not... enough. I don't eat that. <laughs> Fit that? I could not fit that in my mouth. <laughs> oh God! Oh, all right, <laughs> Jerry. Just gotta try. <laughs> Gevar or G Gevar? G H E V A R. Gevar. 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 Javar. I would say Javar. That Bill sounds Bel racy. Bill Belv and Javar. <laughs> I'm gonna go food. Food. All right. Ooh, this nice. sweet dish, round in shape and made of flour, ghee, paneer, and sugar syrup, finds place in every Rajasthani occasion. To uh, any of who our doesn't Indian have a Rajasthani occasion? There you go. To any of our Indian friends or family, please don't be mad at me for butchering the words. <laughs> did, did I ever apologize? <laughs> no. All right. Mike? <laughs> Just Your act word. like you know what the hell you're talking about. Right. Wait for Just, the mail to come in. Right. Fake it till you make it, right? Our right, Mike, yeah, right. uh, yes. Malpua. 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 Uh, Malpua. I'm going to go race on this one. I'm going race. Okay. okay. All right. Ah! I'm sorry, Mike. Malpua is a pancake. Served as a dessert or a snack. Originated from the Indian subcontinent. Popular in India, Nepal, and Bangladesh. Who the How hell eats something it? called pua? <laughs> Malpua. Mal I mean, it's mal. Everyone knows the Latin mal root is for not bad. good. Right? <laughs> pua. Pua. Sorry. Joey? Watch out. you would be messing with some Firefly uh, fans there. Yeah, you better be careful. Mal. All right, Cha All right I'm Brian. ready. Brian. Chagrian, C H A G R I A N, Chagrian. That's a Star Wars race. Star Wars race. That is nice. correct. Chagrians were an amphibious species of tall, horned humanoids with blue skin. They were distinguished by two fleshy head tentacles protruding from their back side of their skull, wrapping down over their shoulders and ending in brownish tipped horns. Who doesn't Just love a. <laughs> a fleshy tentacle. <laughs> you know, you would think a race that hardy would be able to take out the Gungans because, I mean, yeah. who shouldn't have? <laughs> but anyway, I, I digress. All right, Mike, here's your last one. We quay. We quay. We quay. We quay. We quay. Oh, we quay. Now is that is that Ooh. oh this we quay is delicious or is it those goddamn we quays keep sneaking in the back door? God damn we quayans. Uh I'm going with uh we quayans uh sneaking in the back door because they're uh races. They're Yes That is correct. We quays were a sentient species native to the desert world of they're tough leathery skin. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, it, my my uh, audio dipped out. What was that? Uh, I believe that was. <laughs> oh, it, it, happened. It, it just happened again. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Providing natural resistance to blaster fire, making them ideal bodyguards and bounty hunters. They served the hut. All right, Joey, here's your last one Kubaz. Kubaz. Uh, that sounds like food. Sounds like food. Well, I'm sorry, but... Oh! The Kubaz were a sentient oh, that was him? from the planet Kubindi. They had dark skin, long snouts, sensitive eyes, and apparently liked to spy on Han Solo. <laughs> well, who doesn't? Right, I know. I know. Well, Peter... Uh, in a narrow victory, Joey has taken the lead four to my three in Fantastic. Star Wars race or Indian taste. Excellent. Congratulations, Joey. Joey, Thank you. this Thank is you what you get. Music. Yes. Joey Take a lap. Way. Take a lap, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
He, Joey he is currently that. doing the Kessel Run. There we go. Oh, He's doing the Kessel go. Run. Joey, he did nice, Mike. Good one, Mike. Good one. <laughs> Did you do that nine parsecs? All right. So anyway, that that is our show for tonight. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, make sure you check out uh, zombietools.net. Uh, go buy some swords and stuff. They're cool. Watch the videos. Just watch the videos. You know what? I'm not even going to tell you to buy anything. Watch the videos. Look at the look at those tools. You'll be like, oh, man, how am I going to figure out how to buy some of these? Because mm-hmm. they're very, very cool. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I'm watching the chat room. Terry was watching us tonight, my wife. Yeah. My and, wife. Uh, my wife. High five. I think she's, uh, she might be looking <laughs> at uh, maybe a birthday present coming up, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. You saw yeah. that hint, did you? I did. I did. Uh, I'm glad I said which one I wanted. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Which <laughs> birthday? What was that February again? 8th. What's that? Which one? Which birthday? Oh, February 8th. February 8th, coming up. I'll be 48, if you yeah, can believe it. Yeah, it's not going to get there until. No. Well, it's fine. I'll take a coupon or whatever. I'll, I'll, take, a, I'll take an IOU. I'm good with that. Oh, hell yeah. yeah if he gets a little card that says, this is on its way. No, please, I'll wait till June. I don't care. Um, I, have, I have a lot of patience. All right, everybody. Let's do the closer, Mike. Let's do it. All right. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Myth Wits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our, our guests questions or just banter with the other myth fits like a lot of the people in the room did tonight. If yeah. you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as MythWits and check out MythWits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to check uh, to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher or you can listen at MythWits.Podbean.com. You know, I never say this, but you you can also listen uh, uh, on iTunes if you wanted to. Uh, do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Hey, maybe it's this episode. Who knows? Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't reanimate it using green glowing fluid. Uh, make sure to check out Sue187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike? All right, two things. First, everybody just give Mama Marsh some positive vibes. Her back went out, and she's just in a lot of pain. She came by in the, in the chat room earlier, so, you know, just everyone wish her well. And second, David, fuck the Patriots. <laughs> 